Good morning. This is Pastor Paul uh, coming to you from Painesville Lutheran Church. We, uh, we welcome you to worship on this Sunday morning, May 31st, uh, 2020. Uh, thank you for joining us uh, in this way this Sunday once more. Um, I wanted to give you a little heads up. This service will be a little bit different than what we've done in the past. Uh, there will be a few different elements. Uh, things change just a little bit. Because as you know, uh, our hearts are heavy today. There's been a lot happening in our world that, uh, that challenges us, uh, that's uh, dark. Um, and we want to speak to those things today. And so as uh, you read this, or you, I'm sorry, you hear this, or you see this, uh, it is actually Saturday when we record this service. Uh, so on Sunday morning at this time, one of the announcements we want to tell you is, well, you're watching this at 8.30, uh, between 8.30 and 11 o'clock, we are actually having um, drive-up communion today. We invite you to come. We're going to social distance. We're going to honor all of those uh, safe practices. We'll have masks on. You'll remain in your cars, uh, and we'll have you drive through, and we'll share a blessing with you, and we'll share the elements of communion with you. Uh, it is grape juice, and it's a wafer, gluten-free wafer as well, uh, already prepackaged and, and ready for us to share together. Uh, we want you to be safe. If you're not feeling well, please, please stay home. Uh, but if you are feeling well and you'd like to join us, it's going on right now until 11 o'clock, and so we invite you to come. And as a part of that, we are also uh, blessing our graduates to say thank you for the ministry that they've shared with us. Uh, we have some gifts for them, and we're going to share a blessing, uh, hand it to, to them in the car, and those kind of, those kind of things. And so uh, we will be sharing a, a blessing here now uh, for graduates in just a moment as well. One other announcement that I wanted to make you aware of, though, is that we are also uh, doing a, uh, we don't really have a name for it yet, uh, a food pantry extension type of situation. Uh, we have been working with um, the community uh, food shelf, the community, um, community service center, and uh, we know they're open a couple days a week. They do great ministry there. They help a lot of people in need. Um, and we thought that maybe we, since we're not able to use our building as we have normally used it, uh, could use part of our building to help. So, the back entryway, the big entryway that comes into the fellowship hall, uh, the outside doors will be unlocked starting on Monday, uh, Monday the uh, 1st of June. And we have some food in there uh, and some uh, necessities, and we are going to treat it like uh, those little mini libraries, right? So you can uh, take what you need, and if you have something to drop off, you certainly can do that as well. It is not for stuff. Like, don't leave us couches, but uh, immediate needs. If you've got uh, food, uh, canned goods, uh, non-perishable food items that haven't expired, please drop them off, and then, uh, and then anyone can uh, come and get. So if you need something, uh, please, please come and, and take what you need. Uh, be fed. Um, and, uh, and we're going to try to have this open 24-7. Uh, it, it, the rest of the church building will be locked for safety reasons, um, but, uh, but that open area, it's well lit, and, uh, and we will try and disinfect it on a very regular basis, so we'll make sure that it it's keeps sanitary as well, um, and uh, we need your help. So if you have things to share, share them. If you have things that you need, take them. That's what it's all about. Uh, we want to be a good neighbor for anybody in the community. You don't have to be a member of this church, so spread the word, share it with the people you know and you love and those who need uh, help right now because we know there are a lot of people that do need help right now. We also are starting something this Tuesday. You'll see more information about it hopefully in your newsletter. You can find our website. All this information is on our website. Um, it is a phone call tree sort of situation. So if uh, there's a number and a, um, and a code you type in, you can do it from a landline, a cell phone. Uh, you don't need the internet. Uh, and you can uh, simply call in and you'll get to talk to me on Tuesday. So it, I don't know how big a group. It can be as large as we want. Uh, I can see who comes in. Uh, um, 
hopefully uh, we'll know names. Uh, you know, I, I think they'll show up, but if not, we'll ask people to introduce themselves. We're just going to do a prayer and a check-in, and this is for anyone, but it is especially good for those who um, maybe don't have the internet and can't receive this form of communication with us. We want to stay connected, uh, especially to those people that perhaps don't like, don't use, don't have access uh, to the internet. And so please, uh, please spread the word about that as well. If it goes well, we're going to certainly do it again. We just wanted to see how the first time uh, worked and see if there are any glitches we need to figure out before we make it a regular occurrence. Uh, that being said, we will begin today with our blessing for graduates in this prayer. We are very excited to recognize the high school graduates of Painesville Lutheran Church on this day. It is our privilege to affirm these members of our congregation who have completed one phase of their lives and move with great expectation into another. Graduates, as you celebrate your achievements and prepare to begin new endeavors, we pray that you are mindful of your grounding in faith and of your call to serve God in all your life's works and accomplishments. Let us pray. Gracious God, you bless your servants with many achievements. We give thanks especially for the milestones that our graduates will have attained in their upcoming graduations. As they begin new phases of their lives, may they also know your love and experience your peace in all the experiences they encounter. Bless also the parents of these students who have raised their children and nourished them in the Christian faith. Give them strength in your continuing presence and give them many joyful reunions with their sons and daughters who may be leaving home soon to begin new and varied ventures. Through Jesus Christ, our Lord. Amen. Typically during our services, we would give them a gift of a quilt made by our quilters, and they're beautiful. Uh, we will be giving them those quilts, but unfortunately you won't be able to see that because uh, it'll be uh, not in this setting. But know that we will bless those quilts. We will uh, send them on their way, uh, praying that we will once again join them in worship in this place at some point uh, soon. Um, but they are... Uh, Wherever their adventures take them, uh, we give thanks for their participation in this church and the foundation they receive from this congregation to take with them wherever they may go. Uh, the next part of our service, uh, I want to share our scripture reading and let you know that uh, I will be sharing the scripture reading, uh, ending with uh, uh, doing our, our sermon, and then uh, ending with a psalm as our uh, prayer for the completion of this this uh, homily, but um, we won't be having a children's sermon today, a bucket. Uh, we'll resume that next week, um, and, uh, and we will be sharing uh, uh, prayers in a different way. Uh, you'll hear a little bit about that in the message, but I invite you to uh, also um, take a look at our website and videos. Uh, Kari uh, Shoemaker and Tammy Armstrong, as you'll hear in a little bit, uh, did some videos that are wonderful reminders for us to um, uh, pray differently, to, to pray in, in unique ways. So, and so the prayers today uh, will be yours to share uh, after this, and, uh, and there's lots to pray for. And, uh, and so uh, let us begin with our Acts 2, uh, verse 1 uh, text from, uh, for Pentecost Sunday. When the day of Pentecost had come, they were all together in one place. And suddenly from heaven there came a sound like the rush of a violent wind, and it filled the entire house where they were sitting. Divided tongues as of fire appeared among them, and a tongue rested on each of them. All of them were filled with the Holy Spirit and began to speak in other languages as the Spirit gave them ability. Now there were devout Jews from every nation under heaven living in Jerusalem. And at this sound, the crowd gathered and was bewildered because each one heard them speaking in the native language of each. Amazed and astonished, they asked, Are not all these who are speaking Galileans? And how is it that we hear each of us in our own native languages? Parthians, Medes, 
Elamites and residents of Mesopotamia, Judea and Cappadocia, Pontus and Asia, Phrygia and Pamphylia, Egypt and the parts of Libya belonging to Cyrene, and visitors from Rome, both Jews and proselytes, Cretans and Arabs. In our own languages, we hear them speaking about God's deeds and powers. All were amazed and perplexed, saying to one another, What does this mean? But others sneered and said, They are filled with new wine. But Peter, standing with the eleven, raised his voice and addressed them, Men of Judea and all who live in Jerusalem, let this be known to you and listen to what I say. Indeed, these are not drunk as you suppose, for it is only nine o'clock in the morning. No, this is what was spoken through the prophet Joel. In the last days it will be, God declares that I will pour out my spirit upon all flesh, and your sons and your daughters shall prophesy, and your young men shall see visions, and your old men shall dream dreams. Even upon my slaves, both men and women, in those days I will pour out my spirit, and they shall prophesy. And I will show portents in the heavens above and signs on the earth below, blood and fire and smoky mist. The sun shall be turned to darkness and the moon to blood. Before the coming of the Lord's great and glorious day, then everyone who calls on the name of the Lord shall be saved. Our gospel reading today comes from John 20. 19 through 23. When it was evening on that day, the first day of the week, and the doors of the house where the disciples had met were locked for fear of the Jews, Jesus came and stood among them and said, Peace be with you. After he said this, he showed them his hands and his side. Then the disciples rejoiced when they saw the Lord. Jesus said to them again, Peace be with you. As the Father has sent me, so I send you. When he had said this, he breathed on them and said to them, Receive the Holy Spirit. If you forgive the sins of any, they are forgiven. If you retain the sins of any, they are retained. Here ends our reading. Lord God, may the words of my mouth and the meditations of our hearts glorify you. Amen. There is pain today. We struggle today. I'm struggling with how to share the word of God with all of you as the hurt and pain, grief and despair is overwhelming and it's all around us. I struggle with sharing this message today because I'm white, and I'm privileged. I struggle to, pe- to preach to you today because I don't have to. I could simply turn off my TV, ignore the radio, and walk away from the lives that are being destroyed because it doesn't affect me. Maybe you're in the same boat, as it were. Maybe we have seen too much injustice, or it just doesn't affect us personally, so we tune it out. Or perhaps worse, we speak out trying to justify acts of violence in the name of some sort of political stance or, heaven forbid, in the name of our faith. Well, I am a pastor. I'm a parent, a brother, a husband, and I'm also someone who has benefited from white privilege. It may not have been intentional, but it's there. I don't have to worry about my safety because of the color of my skin. I don't have to worry for my children because they look different or speak a different language. I do not go to sleep thinking about how someone may do, what someone may do or say to me, or they may say something to me that is racist, or I don't have to worry about being treated uh, or judged or prejudged. I don't have to fear in any way that I might be beaten or killed because of how I look. So why am I telling you this? 
Why am I starting this sermon with these words? Because we need to be on the same page moving forward. And it's going to be hard. But I'm asking you to listen to this whole message today. Where I'm going to be honest about my privilege and my ignorance. And I'm going to ask you to do the same. I'm going to ask you to listen to the Holy Spirit in this time and speak about things that are going to be very hard to hear. They're hard to say. And I'm going to ask you to leave your political views out of this conversation. I'm going to ask you to listen to the intent of this message and God's word and to also forgive me if I speak in a way that causes you to see a painful reality that many of us do not want to see, including myself. If you cannot do that and you are content with simply hearing a sermon that makes you feel good and justifies your place in God's kingdom, then I strongly encourage you to turn this off right now. Stop watching, stop listening. Because if you listen, I pray the Holy Spirit will nudge you, will prod you and push you, challenge you, so that you do not just walk past what is happening in our world. I want to make this as plain as I can. If you are not able to listen to some hard truths, stop listening now. God's grace and love are not in the balance here. Those gifts are yours. What we are talking about today is our response to those gifts. So, if you're still with me, that means you are ready to dig deeper, to agree and to disagree, but to not walk away, to hear how our faith in God speaks to our lives and how we live that truth out, and how God also speaks to our neighbors, our brothers and sisters that don't look like us and may not praise God the same way that we do. Many of us like it when our church stays neutral, when we try hard not to rock the boat or disrupt the status quo. And I admit, my own desire for this uh, is profound. I like harmony. Yet there are some areas of our world right now that we must hear from our church, from us. We are the church. We, the faithful, the struggling, those who seek to follow Christ. So here is where we state on a regular basis as a larger church body, as we interpret scripture, as we learn from Jesus Christ's ministry on this planet, here are some of the things that we believe. We believe in justice and kindness. Micah 6.8 says, He has told you what is good. And what does the Lord require of you but to do justice and love kindness and to walk humbly with your God? What happened on, earlier in the week to George Floyd was not justice. It was not kindness and was not okay for us to sit by and say nothing because we are too afraid to offend someone else's views. Seeing that injustice does not mean you are against those who are sworn to protect us. I am proud to know many law enforcement professionals and they are broken hearted at what they saw. If you are appalled at the injustice and the unjust death of George Floyd, you are not automatically against the police. It is not an either-or situation. This mindset needs to change. This idea that we can ignore the racial factor of this incident is also profoundly harmful to people of color, but also to all people. We have a systemic issue in our country that we all too often ignore. There is racial disparity right here. 
People of color do not have the same opportunities, especially as white men. The system that we are talking about, it's us. It's us. We are the system. This is our world. We make the rules and the rules need to change. If we are the church, the hands and feet of God, this incident and so many like it should deeply sadden us. Our brothers and sisters are hurting in deep and profound ways. But it should also anger us. It should prod us to say something, to not be coerced by louder voices that somehow use violence against someone as rationale for added retaliatory violence. The first church that started on Pentecost started with people from differing backgrounds, different places geographically, and people who spoke different languages. The Holy Spirit was present and working. Here is what someone smarter than I said about what happened that day. This quote from Deborah Mumford gives us insight into that first Pentecost, and I quote, The power of the Holy Spirit was at work in the situation in so many ways. The promise of the Holy Spirit compelled 120 people to gather in anticipation of it. They rearranged their schedules and synchronized their calendars to make themselves available to God. The power of the Holy Spirit enabled each person in that room to speak in a language other than their own. The power of the Holy Spirit got the attention of the crowd on the street, perhaps because of the mighty sound of the rushing wind or the sheer chaos of all those people speaking together at the same time. The power of the Holy Spirit emboldened Peter to speak to the masses. The power of the Holy Spirit caused the crowds to not only hear Peter's message, but to also receive it to such an extent that 3,000 people made a decision to follow Jesus. On this one day, the Holy Spirit transcended multiple layers of differences to accomplish God's many purposes. End quote. From that beginning, God's church has spread to all corners of the world. It didn't start with white people. In that part of our world, it started with people of color, people who spoke and acted differently than one another. They didn't, they didn't understand each other. It wasn't until the power of the Holy Spirit changed things by not distinguishing between characteristics. In this multi-ethnic gathering, people spoke to one another in the language that they understood. At that moment, they were able to listen to one another, share their experiences about life, yes, but also about God's presence in their lives. In the end, that gathering created community. Out of that chaotic mess grew a community. The fires that burned on their heads was an example of peace, respect, a mutual desire to grow together with the help of God's advocate, the Holy Spirit. We see fires now, too. Fires that burn in the hearts of protesters over George Floyd's tragic murder. To protest and to speak out in a nonviolent, peaceful way is as much a part of American life as time at the beach, summer barbecues, baseball games. It's also how, in some cases, difficult change occurs. But hurting people, Looting and burning businesses, especially businesses that sustain people that are in need, is wrong. It is not behavior that we should condone or encourage. As news reports continue to come to light, it is becoming apparent that there are extremist groups that are using this painful time to fuel the fire of hatred and violence right here in our state. Here is where our white privilege nudges us to ignore 
and run away from the painful truths in our world. If we ignore these facts, we are simply saying it is okay with us. If we say nothing, we are allowing hatred to be the loudest voice. At least that's what I think. And I think that I've done that too. It infuriates and incenses me that racist, hate-filled groups are using the pain of others to incite more hatred and more violence solely for their own gain. We are better than this. I pray we are better than this. I have heard it said that these extremist groups are from the far left, and I have heard that they come from the far right. Hear me plainly. Stop picking your political party over your calling as a Christian. They are not one and the same. They should not hold the same status for you. Stop using political values as a placeholder for your Christian values. When Jesus came amongst the disciples after he was crucified, died, and was buried, and rose from the dead, John tells us that he had holes in his hand and showed those to those who gathered so that they might believe. Then he breathed on them and gave them the Holy Spirit, saying, Peace be with you. What a joyous time that must have been. But the reading from John ends with these words. If you forgive the sins of any, they are forgiven them. If you retain the sins of any, they are retained. These are the words that speak right to the heart of our collective grief. The sins that Jesus is referring to are anything that gets in the way of our relationship with God. And we have the power with the help of the Holy Spirit to, to do something about that interference, that sin, that sin that separates us from God. When we exercise the gift of forgiveness, we do not do it for the other, but instead we do it for us because it changes us. It frees us from sin so that we may see more clearly the love of God. We are called to speak forgiveness in the midst of actions that hurt us, along with words that challenge one another to love our neighbor. That's not easy. To simultaneously call for justice and peace, fairness and equality, and to forgive those who cause us pain and hurt in the midst of this whole mess we call life. It is not easy, but faith is not the absence of difficulty. It is the knowledge that we are not alone. None of this, though, is made any easier in the midst of a global pandemic where we are struggling for normalcy. Well, for some, fear is overwhelming, and for others, frustration over closures seems all-consuming. Another fire that burns and smolders for us. Where even churches are thrust into the middle of some sort of political agenda about opening or not opening. Even our own congregation is caught between longing to be together and taking seriously the help, health of all who gather in this place. We are working on what that looks like as elected leaders of your church, your congregation. But you need to understand one thing, and I pray it helps guide all of your decision-making in regards to this issue. This congregation has never been closed. But the building will remain closed and such, until such a time that we may gather safely and care for those that are the most vulnerable in our presence. We will not be a hot spot for the spread of a virus and we will heed the words of Christ when he said that we should love the Lord your God with all your heart and with all your soul and with all your mind. This is the first commandment, and the second is like it. You shall love your neighbor as yourself. We will be showing our love of God by loving our neighbor and taking their health and well-being into consideration at every point. 
I know this causes us additional grief. We long for gathering, gathered fellowship, and to love one another in the ways that are comfortable for us. I lament this with you. We have, though, and we must continue to find new ways to reach out to one another, to find that fellowship together. I invite you to take your hurts and concerns about this and all that we've discussed to God. Pray as we have been taught, knowing that God does hear our prayers. We've been blessed this week, as I said just a little bit ago, by hearing new ways to pray from Tammy and Kari. Take a look at these videos. Be inspired to use that amazing gift of prayer as a regular part of your daily life. And we must also remember that this day of Pentecost, this day that we celebrate the start of the church, is also the day we recognize our high school seniors as we bless them just a little bit ago. Another place to find some grief. Another place where things are not the same. I grieve for all those who have missed out on the mi this milestone that goes with this time of life. But I, like the disciples, find hope and a reason for rejoicing. These seniors are solid. They are talented. They are gifted men and women. I pray that through their gifts we may see change. I'm inspired by them. There is one graduate this year that inspires me daily. She is strong-willed, decidedly independent, has a huge heart and a willingness to reach out into the unknown to make a difference. I am proud of her, and I'm proud of all of her classmates for their grit, as Mrs. Bungham tells her choir students. But we cannot just hand these problems off to the next generation. We are in this mess together, and with the help of the Holy Spirit, we can seek healing and seek wholeness. The first step is to admit that we do not have all the answers and not to be afraid to show love and compassion. Speak out against injustice. Acknowledge your own privilege and make sure that you do not you do your best to change the system. Today we grieve. Today we grieve the death of 13 people right here in our county. We grieve 104,000 plus people in this country. And we grieve over 365,000 souls in this world who have died due to the COVID-19 virus. And we grieve the tragic death of George Floyd and so many who've lost their lives in the search for basic human rights and human dignity. There are fires burning. But may the fire of the Holy Spirit be the fire that is never extinguished in us, that we may grow to see our own culpability in this sinful world so that that flame may burst through us to a world that may know more fully the richness of God's diversity. That is the fire that we could all use. I'd like to end this message and this service now by reading a psalm that is typically a psalm of rejoicing. It's a psalm of praise. But I also hear this psalm as a bit of a lament today. And so I share it with you and I I pray it for us right now. God is our refuge and strength, a very present help in trouble. Therefore, we will not fear, though the earth should change, though the mountains shake in the heart of the sea, though its waters roar and foam, though the mountains tremble with its tumult. There is a river whose streams make glad the city of God, 
the holy habitation of the Most High. God is in the midst of the city. It shall not be moved. God will help it when the morning dawns. The nations are in an uproar. The kingdoms totter. He utters his voice and the earth melts. The Lord of hosts is with us. The Lord of Jacob is our refuge. Come, behold the work of the Lord. See what desolations he has brought on the earth. He makes wars cease. To the ends of the earth he breaks the bow and shatters the spear. He burns the shields with fire. Be still and know that I am God. I am exalted among the nations. I am exalted in the earth. The Lord of hosts is with us. The God of Jacob is our refuge. Psalm 46. Amen. May you find peace today in the love and grace of God. Go in peace to love and serve the Lord.